We know that regardless of the recent fluctuations in Boeing stock price, the aerospace cycle is on fire right now. The airlines are flush with cash for the first time in ages. And whenever they have money, they use it to buy new planes. In particular, they want more fuel-efficient aircraft that can lower their operating costs, as jet fuel is the number one expense when you're running an airline. That's why the Boeing 787 Dreamliner is basically a six-year wait list, even though the new plane has been plagued with problems. Typically, we think of commercial aircraft as being a duopoly. You've got Boeing in America, you've got Airbus in Europe, and that's it. That's wrong. There's a third company that looks like it could be ready to break into this business in a big way. Couldn't come at a better time. I'm talking about Bombardier. It's a Canadian company that's the world number three maker of planes, mostly business jets. If you've ever coveted a Learjet, that's, that's them, as well as being the number one maker of trains. The company's business jet division has seen terrific growth in emerging markets, particularly Asia. However, the big story here is the C-Series, Bombardier's jetliner, that's designed to compete with the smaller planes from Boeing and Airbus in mid-sized markets throughout the world. Earlier this month, the company got their third test version up in the air. Yes, it too has been somewhat problem-plagued, but the C-Series is expected to hit the market sometimes next year. Uh, this plane delivers the lowest operating cost in its class, significant fuel burn advantage over the competition. That is a big deal. And it's why Bombardier already has 447 orders for these babies as of the beginning of this month. Let's take a closer look at this story with Pierre Baudouin. He's the president and CEO of Bombardier, does not trade in America. Find out more about how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Baudouin, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you so much. Well, Pierre, as you know, I mean, we, we love to have you on because you've got a great view of the world. We uh, are not in a position to, this stock doesn't trade in America. I want to say that up front so people say, well, what's the symbol, Jim? We don't have it. But give us a tenor. We've been hearing lately that there's somewhat of a glut in aircraft. But I looked at your presentations. It doesn't seem like there is. A glut, do you mean? Well, I mean, people are saying there's an inventory correction going on right now. Okay. That's, that's driven Boeing down from 128 to one, uh, 148 to 125. And I don't see that when I read. I read about demand when I read your presentation. No, we see that uh, there's a large demand for fuel-efficient airplane. Right. Of course, there's a lot of old airplanes that need to be uh, trade, traded in eventually or exchanged because, like you said, it's all about fuel burn. It's about the seat costs. So getting an efficient airplane so that uh, the airlines can keep the price of the tickets reasonable. Why is it that uh, these great companies, uh, Airbus, Boeing, your company, have problems with making these planes? And have there always been, except for now, we have great media attention? Well, you see, in the end, uh, today, it's a very complex product, yeah. airplanes. And uh, we have to make sure that they're reliable. Of course, safety, there's no compromise on safety right. when you de design an airplane and really making sure that uh, these products are out there for 20 years, uh, they'll be in airline operation for a very long term. So uh, doing the test properly up front is crucial. So it takes time to do things properly. But there's still tons of demand if you get it right. Oh, yes, of course. And Asia is growing very right. rapidly. Uh, there's a lot of emerging markets that are setting up airlines uh, in the U.S. The fleets are quite old right. and need replacement. Uh, and we're focused on making sure that we create an airplane that's 135 seats, 110 right. seats. Uh, and that's basically the average amount of passenger. So having the right size permits the airline to offer more frequency. So that's really what you want when you travel. Let's talk about this business jet market, because remember, we this was one of those things before we went into the Great Recession. It was like this. It was like a parabolic demand. Where is it versus, say, 2005 to 2006 in terms of the demand level? Well, it depends on the category. If we look at a large business jet, uh, it actually has been growing since 2008. Okay. And that's a, a business jet for people that have global businesses that travel the, the, the planet. And that's a category given the emerging uh, markets and international companies that people travel uh, across the world. So that's going to continue to grow. Where it's been a little bit slower is in the light jet category. Right. And that depends really on the U.S. economy. But now that the economy is picking up, uh, we see that category picking up too. It, is Lear its own worst enemy? Uh, a friend of mine was actually... It's in the process of buying a 20-year-old jet. And just, I said, well, geez, isn't that old? And he said, no, Lear jets last forever. Yeah, airplanes last for a long time. But if you look in terms of how electronics have evolved, mm -hmm. uh, fuel efficiency, 
I think today with the modern avionics, uh, fuel efficiency, really if you go for a very old product, you've got a lot of disadvantage. Okay, how about train demand? Where are we worldwide there? Because that's the other thing that you guys dominate. Yeah, it's a very exciting part mm -hmm. of, of our business. Uh, everywhere I go, people talk about infrastructure. And of course, there's more and more urbanization. So cities are getting bigger. What do they need? They need trains to move people uh, in cities. Right. So, uh, and we're the world's biggest company in this field. So it's high-speed train, trams, metros, and so on. And that's good. Now, I can't. I, I have to ask you about this because on my plane last night, from all people were talking about. They asked the pilots, all this, all the attendants. Do you do you have a theory on Malay on the Malaysian plane? And everyone had a theory, but I mean, you would know more than most. Well, it's a mystery uh, yeah, to me. It really me. is, and right? It's, it's something I hope gets solved fairly rapidly. Uh, like uh, we're an airplane manufacturer, we want to understand what happened. Yeah, excellent. Well, you know, I know that the planes are, there was a problem here. It looks like I think you're at a trough point. You're, an Amer you're not an American company, so I can't say how I feel, <laughs> but it does seem like that it's about to go like this. Okay, that was, that was Pierre Baudouin. He's the president and CEO of Bombardier. Do some work on it. Understand that I just wanted to put it as a, as a demand issue. Demand for trains, demand for planes remains very strong. Stay with Kramer.